Well, hello there. Um, thank you very much for uh, watching another one of my videos. I really appreciate it. Oh, I'm out in the beautiful Australian bush. Um, I'm in a very similar place to my last video. Um, same river, same country, but I'm a little bit further upstream. Um, I haven't got much time, so I want to make the most of it by going to a place that's relatively easy to access, um, but also a place that I know uh, is going to hopefully provide some good camping and let me to uh, cook up some good food and just to relax in this beautiful environment and because it's really warm today hopefully enjoy a swim too. I have finally got around to getting a microphone for the GoPro so I'm hopeful that um, a lot of the handling noise uh, which has frustrated me in the past will be no more but I could also have mucked up the settings and there could be no audio at all, audio at all so that'd be very awkward if that is the case. Yeah looking forward to hopefully finding a nice sandy beach hopefully some shade a couple of trees to hang the hammock and a nice deep pool that's not too much to ask for, is it? Anyway, I'll find it, hopefully. It's definitely good to be outside. Today's actually a work day and I'm on uh, Finally, finally on leave for the year, so yeah, it's been a long year, so um, it's nice to, I didn't think I'd be able to squeeze a, another trip in, but I found a, found a basically a day and a bit and a night that I could um, get away, so yeah, make the most of it and relax today, I think. Although I do have an interesting project in mind, so I'm hopeful that'll come together. One never knows though when you're out here. Needless to say, if it does come off, dinner is going to be very, very awesome. The east coast of Australia's had a lot of rain. Um, we've been in drought for a very long time and we've got a lot of rain in the last week or so. And so the water quality may actually be pretty average. Um, happens when you get a, a big flow after a long period of drought that you get the water stirs up a lot of stuff, flushes it out. So we'll just have to see. It's really cool little orchids everywhere. How cool is this? It's um, there's no plant. It's growing all onto the ground, and then you've got this stem and these really cool flowers. So I think I'm going to walk a little bit further. The river level is actually up quite a lot from the last time I was here. Um, pretty cool little gorge over there. Oh, this is looking a bit more promising. All right, you can have a look too. <laughs> Got the wobbles, <laughs> time to get off. All right, well, just come down there. Water's definitely got a good flow to it. It 
So, conundrum. I spend a lot of time my walking, going through gorges and rivers and stuff, and I never bother taking my shoes off because basically it's much easier to walk in the water many times than trying to pick your way around the cliff and cliffs and vegetation, etc. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to camp somewhere here because it just looks awesome. And I've got this one small band of river to cross. Now, part of me is uh, just going, just jump in and you'll be across in 10 seconds. And the other half of me is going, just take your shoes off. But I'm inherently lazy, you see, and that uh, it takes a fair bit of effort, so. <sighs> Sigh. All right, I'm gonna take my shoes off. And um, I'm a bit disappointed in myself, to be honest. Oh, I never do this. Very disappointed in myself. Um, these are Cedar Summit Quagmire Gators. I think I'm on to about my third pair. They are fantastic. I do trash them pretty quickly, but the style of walking I do is not conducive to keeping gear long term. I trash my boots pretty quickly too. Oh, it's so warm and muggy. So one thing I haven't thought through is that's all sandbank. Uh, unless I can find myself a rock, I'm gonna have sandy wet feet. Another reason I don't like taking my boots off is this is the most likely bit to get bitten by a snake. And uh, it's pretty warm today and this is the river so there are definitely gonna be snakes about. Um, and you don't always see them. So yeah, I like to have my boots and my gaiters on because that gives you pretty good protection. Nonetheless, I'm not going to be walking too far without my uh, without my boots on. This is awesome. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Um, I think the way I wanted to cook dinner, it's probably gonna work here. I haven't quite found a spot where to put up the hammock, but I think with a bit of careful searching, I should be able to find something. So, oh, it's all coming together. So it's about quarter, just gone quarter past two in the afternoon. And that means, Got about six, just over six hours of light left. Six and a half, maybe. So that should be more than enough time to um, set up camp and bushcraft my dinner. It's gonna be fun. I have always wanted to do this. Uh, the secret will be revealed soon. So I've just spent a probably a good 20 minutes just walking around Sussing, sussing this spot out. And I definitely want to stay here. The problem I'm having at the moment is I can't find a good spot to hang the hammock. Um, ideally, I'd like to be down here at the river. You can see the, there's a small sub channel that comes off near the cliffs there, and it goes around there. That's where I crossed. And then over there, it kind of joins back together again. So I'm on a bit of an island here. And it's just awesome because there's a great view you can see the little waterfall over there. So yeah, I, I definitely want to camp here and have my fire and cook my food here. The problem is I can't get the hammock up. Um, or I could get the hammock up, but I couldn't get the tarp up with it. Anyway, so I've got to, I want to get the hammock and the tarp set up. There is a little bit of clouds around. There wasn't any rain forecast, so I'm not too worried about there being any rain. 
Um, obviously when you're coming to river you check those sorts of things, which I've done. Um, but I think I'm going to be camping, or at least sleeping up there tonight. I'll be cooking down here. So I'm uh, really glad that I went to all the effort of taking the boots off. Um, because now it looks like I have to camp on that side. So that means crossing at least three more times tonight. So once to go set up, once to come back, and then once to sleep tonight. I don't want to leave it till tonight because by the time I've mucked about with what I want to do um, with my dinner, it's going to take a lot of time and effort. And I probably won't uh, be wanting to do the, the camp set up then. So I'm going to do it now. And um, there was one spot over there on just on below the cliff that I'll check out but otherwise I'll have to be a short hike up and then I'll be sort of 30 meters I'll get a really nice view sort of 30 meters above the above the cliff so probably just somewhere up here that'd be pretty ace but anyway moral of the story don't take your boots off <sighs> all right here it goes wet feet So I could probably set up in here between those two trees. Might need to yeah, remove some of that bottom stuff. But there's no real view here and up there or at least I have a view and it is a bit more of a scramble but it's not that much more of a scramble than to get there. So I think I'm going to set up at the top and get myself a nice view. The good thing about coming over here is I have found a much easier ramp to climb up, so it's actually not that much work. These two trees would be awesome, but there's a whole range of reasons why that's not a good idea. So I'm sure I'll find something up here. So in terms of what I'm looking for, I'm really looking for a couple of the key things. Ideally, I like a little bit of flat ground. It's going to be uh, tough given where we are, but just so it's easy to get in and out of the hammock, and we're going to have to worry about stuff rolling away in the middle of the night. I'm obviously going to need two trees for the right distance apart, and I need to check up in the canopy that there's no no dangerous branches around, and then. Hopefully something like that view would be reasonably acceptable to me, right now. Huh. Well, it was worth coming up here. Um, I found it pretty easily. So that's going to be my view. And I'm going to go from this tree to that tree. The ground's relatively flat. Uh, so if, and there's not much around that's going to get in the way of the tarp. And yeah, the view here. That is just phenomenal. Moment of truth. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, last time I was out, the trees were so wide at the base that um, the tree straps wouldn't even go all the way around. So I had to improvise the, a lot of extra paracord to make it work. This is perfect. I might, um, I might just set up the tree straps just a little bit higher and um, I'm still experimenting with hammocks and how to how to make them work. My understanding is is if you don't pitch the hammock too tautly, um, that you can get a di better a better diagonal lay. So rather than just laying up and down, you kind of push out one side and this way like this, um, and that's supposed to be more comfortable. So I think if I move the the straps up a little higher, I'll actually. Um, 
have a better chance of doing doing that. But oh, what a spot! What a view! Just amazing. Yeah, it's amazing what you can do with um, a bit over 24 hours. All right, let's do this. Tall line hitch. We've got some prusik loops there which I'll use with toggles for to the top. And then that's just the bow line. And these are the uh, tree straps to the hammock. All set up and I'm enjoying the view from my camp. It is definitely getting more overcast and there is a bit of rain in the look of some of those clouds so um, hopefully it doesn't get too uh, too damp. That is a good good tarp pitch. Um, I've only run a few extra guidelines just to stop it flapping about in the wind. Um, yeah awesome awesome part of the world give you a 360 might just be able to catch a view of my tarp all the way up there it's pretty awesome actually Alrighty, well, made it down to the river again. Um, pretty happy with the tarp and the hammock setup, to be honest. It's pretty good. Um, awesome view, and it's not too far to climb up there, even though that'll be a little bit of a hassle later on tonight, but I've got a really bright headlamp, so it won't be a drama. So, plan now is, and it's an unconventional one, because not everybody is silly enough to carry around a frozen chicken. I'm going to try and do a... Um, water wheel rotisserie chicken now it might just end up being a rotisserie chicken because i ran out of time to make it work properly but i've got this um this river with the there's a decent flow there and so i think i can get enough uh, momentum from the water to turn the wheel um but it's just a matter of whether or not i can actually do it um is another thing entirely so it's just about four o'clock in the afternoon. So the chicken is about three, just over three kilos. Um, so I'm not having anything else for dinner other than chicken. Um, it's still a little bit frozen, but I think by the time I'm ready to start cooking, it'll be okay. Um, so yeah, I've got to get, I've got to get cracking. So what I want to do is get probably two tripods. There'll be one in the water and then one out of the water. Um, probably a length, the straightest length of timber or branch I can find that's about three meters long. And then I'm gonna need probably four lengths of timber, about half a meter long, and then I'll split some ends down and make some paddles. Like I say, not sure if it's gonna work or not, I'll give it a go. Uh, if worst comes to worst, it's just gonna be the old manual rotisserie chicken. But um, yeah, this is a pretty awesome spot to to give it a crack anyway. I've always wanted to do this, guys. Um, yeah, so why not give it a go? So anyway, stop gas bagging and uh, I've got to find some, find some wood. Alrighty, so tools to the trade for this, uh, this particular job. It's gonna be the Silky Supercell 21. Um, it's very similar to the Silky Gomboy, but it has a pistol grip and I've got a large teeth blade on there. So I have broken the tip off. I'm really like these saws, they're lightweight, um, but I'll be damned if I can use them properly without breaking them. So, you know, maybe it's just me, but um, anyway, they're awesome. The tip 
tip breaking off is not an issue. I've also got a um, Hidden Woodsman LT Right Genesis uh, bushcraft blade. And I've got that on a um, got that on a very awesome sheath that um, the guy in Melbourne made for me. It goes by the name of uh, Gutter Rat Knives. So check his work out on um, Instagram and Facebook. But yeah, love this sheath. It's got a really good, um, really good firm clip. It's got a tech plate, which makes it really easy to get on and off the belt. Um, and this drop plate is just really nifty because it sits below. It means the knife is sitting below my pack. So my pack's here and I can wear it with my pack on and it doesn't get in the way too much. So yeah, um, if you need a, if you like Kydex and you're thinking about getting a sheath made, yeah, check out um, Gareth from Gutter Rat Knives. He, do, he did a great job, really quick turnaround too. So yeah, all right, let's get some wood. Bit of hard work looking for timber. I think I found so I think this is gonna be my pole that the chicken's gonna be on. It's gonna take a bit of work to clean it up. Um, but it's the longest straightest, it's not straight, but it's the longest straightest bit of wood I can find. So what I need it to do is to basically Catch the main flow over there, and then uh, spin. So it may be too heavy, I'm not sure. Uh, I might be able to find a smaller, lighter one, but at least it's a start. So yeah, it's, uh, it's going okay. I've got some other timber too. So you can see here, I've just got some, uh, there's the, the stringy bark bark which I'll cut up into paddles, hopefully. And then I've got some other stuff I can make a, a tripod, probably two tripods and the paddle arms. And then I've got some firewood too. So I might need a few more lengths actually. I might go grab a couple more before I start building, but yeah, it's coming together. So I did find and then cut this big Y branch and I thought I could save myself some work from uh, making a, a, tr a second tripod. So I reckon, I can probably get this in. Oh yeah, it's working all right. And then the idea is going to be that, that would sit in there and spin. Now this, the more I think about this one, is probably too heavy and too big. The problem is, it's really hard to find long straight branches here in Australia. The trees grow in every which direction and so finding something that's two or three metres long as straight and isn't too heavy is a bit of a challenge. But that's a general concept. Um, I can probably put that in a bit lower but I think that'd be about right in terms of the, um, if I had the fire here, I think that'd be okay.
I have come up trumps. I um, have found an old bit of timber, a bit of driftwood, and it's not super strong, but I think it will probably just, just be long and straight enough and strong enough to be the main pole. So that's very exciting. So I'm gonna measure off this one. Oh, that is absolutely fantastic. This is obviously the hardest piece to find. Something that is long, straight, not too heavy. Um, yeah, let's see how we go. And we can walk in the water because I'm already wet because I have crossed this river a lot of times. Good, chunk in the water. All right, so this is the length of the paddle arms. So I need four of these. All right, it's all coming together. Um, I wasn't happy with the branches that I had, so I um, took the one that I'd measured, and then I was actually able to really quickly find, just on the other side of the river there, I was able to really quickly find three other ones that length that I could cut. So that was, um, yeah, I've, I've never done anything like this before. And so maybe if you're thinking about doing it, my tip would be rather than grabbing a whole bunch of timber, grab the pole and then figure out the length from the, the pole to the water and then go and fo find your timber that way. So figure out what lengths you need. Cause if you're looking for something specific, you might actually have a more efficient time of uh, going about it rather than just bring a whole bunch of stuff that looks about right. None of it's wasted, it's all going to be firewood. Alright, I'm going to make my tripod. I'll do it about here. It's not pretty, there are better ways to do it. But for a simple tripod, I think this will probably do the job. Okay, I think they're about, about right. I'm not sure they're nice and even. This is where I wish I knew more knots. I think the idea is just to really bind it on nice and tight. So this bit's actually um, harder than it looks, especially when your knot tying skills are not very good. Uh, it's also getting pretty dark and uh, it's been like this for a few hours but it kind of this is the first time it's felt like it's gonna rain and if it does that's gonna that's gonna put a damper in my evening that's for sure yeah I don't know any I don't know any knots that kind of self tighten because if you did you could really like wrench on it and um, yeah yeah, it's not proving to be particularly successful at this stage. The general concept's there, but whether or not... 6 o'clock now... It's probably not half an hour of just mucking about. Anyway, I'll persevere for a bit longer. Ugh. So I know it's not pretty, and it's not exactly square yet. But here's the rotisserie pole with two paddles. I guess it'll be four paddles, so... I don't know if it's going to be enough to turn the wheel, but uh, now I've got to get cut up the bark uh, and then attach that to each end, and then we're good to give it a trial run, I guess. So I just felt some raindrops, so that is not good news. But I'm actually running out of paracord. I'm using more than I expected. So, I don't know. Give it a red hot go. 
Oh, geez, it's getting really dark. I don't know. If it's probably not coming off on the camera because the cameras are really good at not showing how dark it is, but it kind of feels like it's about to pour down. Oh, I'm about two minutes away from the <laughs> two minute climb up to the top. That's awesome. Oh well, it's all part of the adventure. All right, this holidays I've got to sit down and learn my knots. Oh man, <laughs> day one of holidays and I'm out here on a sandbank in a wilderness river, bushcrafting a doesn't look like a uh, doesn't look like it much right now. Let's whack on the tripod and have a look and see how it uh, how it fares. All right, um, moment of truth. I'm pretty sure this is going to be an absolute failure and a pretty unspectacular one at that. But hey, it's fun, right? Anyway, I will share with you my successes and failures, so uh, perhaps you can learn something from this. Yeah. Hmm. I think it might need some adjustments. Manual rotisserie chicken it is, I think. Alas. Oh well. So the thing to know about this is that it's only Mark 1 and that there are some... Oh dearie me. So there are some pretty substantial improvements that can be made. Where to start? Oh dear. It just looks so sad, um, crumpled up in the river. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, um, <laughs> I've got to put this thing out of its misery, poor thing. <laughs> oh dearie me. Oh. Okay, so where did I go wrong? Lots of places is the honest truth. Not having a good understanding of knots, I wasn't able to tie these properly. The bark, the bark paddle is actually a pretty good idea. Um, obviously, yeah, my knot, knotsmanship is on show here. The straightest timber I could find is dead timber. So because I'm in a national park, I can't cut fresh timber down. Bushcraft isn't really about that, it's about using the materials you can find without having an impact on the bush, so um, knots, better timber, is also pretty heavy and the one thing about the bark, it takes water and then it weighs a lot and so the actual weight becomes an issue. Anyway, moving right along, I'm going to have me another beer, I'm going to grill a chicken, life's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, straight. Uh, if I'm honest, that was a far bigger failure than I was expecting. I wasn't sure it was going to work. I didn't think it'd be that crap. Oh. Uh, I may as well have the fire out in the middle. branch is actually pretty wide, wide. It's pretty high, so I think to get a good roast, I'm gonna need it to be a bit lower. Don't try this at home. Alrighty, I'm gonna have to cut my pole a little bit shorter. I think it's getting pretty good.
So I think I'm going to um, jettison the tripod. I've got another Y branch, so I'm going to use a Y branch. Same as that. That that works pretty well, I think. So. So again, just cutting on an angle, probably about 45 degrees. Alrighty, well this is the fun <laughs> the fun part of the night. It's been good. I'm a little bit disappointed about my water wheel, but it was probably always bound to happen. Better luck next time as they say. Alright, so time to light the fire. I've collected some of this pretty dry stringy bark. I'm gonna use that as my tinder. I'm just gonna work it up, try and really get all those fibers out. Because this stuff takes a spark pretty well but it can be a little bit hit and miss. So I'm just trying to make a nice, nice big tinder bundle. This is a fantastic tinder, but it can just take a bit of preparation. And sometimes when it's, when it's uh, wet or damp, it can be a bit hard. So have lots is my recommendation. Really, really work those fibers. The more severs area, the better luck you have with a spark actually uh, combusting. Okay, that's pretty good. All right. Straight on with some small sticks. Might just need a bit of oxygen. There's so much timber around as well, it's awesome. All dried, eucalypt. Well, this ain't too bad. <laughs> so I've got my chicken. It's about three and a half kilos. I um, took it frozen and it's um, it's mostly thawed out. There's a little bit of, no, it's, it's just thawed out. I thought there might be a little bit of ice in there, but it's okay. The way I like to do my chicken, I like to put it in lots and lots of herbs, a little bit of spice on the outside, and then some lemon on the inside to keep it nice and moist. The most difficult thing this time around, I think, is going to be the um, getting a tight enough fit around the branch. So when you rotate the branch, the chicken doesn't just spin on the branch, but it goes with the branch. So I've got some, um, I've got some fresh sage from the garden, and what I like to do is just um, stuff a little bit of this under the under the skin. I've got some butter too, which I'm going to put under the skin just to keep a, keep the, the breast nice and moist. Got some oregano. That goes in there too. And I've got some thyme. And I'll shove some thyme under the skin and then a bit in the cavity too. Mm -hmm. And that'll, um, that'll get you a nice, nice, really flavorful meat. So with the lemon, because we've got quite a thick stick, I might actually quarter it. I normally just halve it, and that way the lemon's gonna sort of steam when it gets warm and steam the meat from the inside. But I think I might only, it's gonna be a bit of trial and error to see how we go with the um, getting the stick through here. I've got some Cajun spice, which I'm gonna rub on the skin. I'm just gonna get the butter. Alrighty, you can see here I've got herbs and butter under the skin. And then a bit of lemon in the cavity. 
This is going to be the interesting part. A bit of my lemon fell out. So with a bit of chicken twine, I'm just going to tie the legs really tightly around the around the branch. Hopefully better than my uh, water wheel. So this is yeah, just kitchen twine, regular kitchen twine. Alrighty, second moment of truth. Oh, hey, there we go. That is fantastic. My very excellent girlfriend got me a, um, a beer advent calendar and she went to the effort of wrapping up all the beers for me. So I've taken this one out, it's still nice and cold. Oh, hello. We've got a Hope Brewery Brute IPA. I'm sure it's going to be absolutely delicious. And I think I might need to just ease the flame off a bit. <laughs> Cheers guys. Oh no, the string's burning. <laughs> so my um, beautifully tied, beautifully tied kitchen twine has just burnt through. So I don't care. Oh, this one. <laughs> just happy for the chicken to do its thing. And just hopefully I can turn it and it's not going to spin around everywhere. Oh, looks pretty good to me. How good is this? It might not have been the, uh, the way to cook the chicken that I originally envisaged, but it's still pretty good. Nice cold beer. Chicken on the fire. Amazing river gorge, all to myself. It's just phenomenal. Oh, it's gonna be a great night. Well, it seems to still want to turn without the, uh, without the string. Oh, I am completely knackered. It's been a long day. It's, uh, it's 20 past eight. The chicken's only been on for 15 minutes. So it's going to be a late dinner. Go, go, go the whole day. But, um, yeah, now I can relax. One thing that might be, um, of interest to you if you want to do this uh, yourself is to make the fire a bit bigger than you think and so what I've got is basically the fire on the outside just by feeding branches around it and then using coals in the middle to cook the bird um, having it this way means you can kind of adjust the heat a bit easier so you can just kind of move the branch out or in or put more on um, yeah I think that is working pretty well. Yeah, very happy with that. Well, I think um, <laughs> I think dinner's going to be a little while away, so I've got some wasabi peas. That's going to be my food until the bird cooks. The moon's out already. Oh man, this is spectacular. So it's probably time for a bit of a dinner update. Um, first, the time is quarter past nine, so it's certainly getting on in the evening. But the chicken's looking pretty good. Just giving it a gentle, gentle rotate every few minutes. And um, yeah, it's it's been it's held onto the stick really well, which is great because I was really <laughs> that kitchen twine burnt off like in literally two minutes. So that did nothing. But um, I guess because the stick's so large, it just, it's kind of sitting on there, which is great. So it looks like it's cooking really well. Um, I haven't eaten, like I've had the wasabi peas, a little bit of dried mango on the walk-in, and then some muesli bars for breakfast. That's it, like I'm starving. So I might give it another 10 minutes or so, and then um, I'm gonna cut off a, I'm gonna cut off a drumstick, I think. Oh, it's been so nice just sitting here next to the fire, drinking a beer, 
listening to the frogs. The frogs are just crazy. I'm so excited. It's really cooking nice. Okay, I think it's time to try. Ooh, do I try the wing first? Oh, it's juicy. Well, that was a little, uh, little hot to the touch. Not surprising, but I'm going to start off with a wing. Oh, it's cooked beautifully. Mmm. All right, time to get a jump stick. Let's do this properly. Whoa. Let's see how it tastes. Oh, it's amazing. It's really juicy, really well cooked. Time to tuck in. I'll catch up with you guys in a sec. Okay, so I've pretty much gorged myself on uh, a fair bit of meat. I'm pretty keen to see how the breast has uh, turned out. So, you know, let's have a look. Certainly not gonna um, make you watch me eat the whole chicken, but. Oh, just tastes like sage and, oh, it's so good. Cheers, everyone. Well, I'm um, <laughs> sorry to say I didn't quite finish the chicken. It's a pretty big, uh, <laughs> pretty big bird, but uh, all in all, that was a pretty good dinner. I do have one more, one more little brew with me tonight. And this is one I've been um, keeping for a little while. It is a peanut butter milk stout from uh, Belching Fever Brewery. I'm assuming it's Canada. Turns out it's from America. I've had this in my fridge for about three or four weeks. So I'm, uh, yeah, been looking forward to this one. Very keen to see what it actually tastes like. Mmm. Very different. Definitely stouty. I'm not getting a lot of peanut butter. It tastes really familiar. I can't, um, can't think for the life of me what that tastes like. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this one right next to the fire and I'm just going to keep back and relax. It's been a long day. It's been, you know, coming out here and doing, doing these sorts of things. It's awesome fun, but it can be a lot of work too. So, you know, especially when you bought, uh, build a defective water wheel. Yep. A lot of work. A lot of fun though. It's awesome. I love it. I just, yeah. Alas, the night has come to an end. Plenty of water on the fire. Um, yeah, it's bedtime, so I've got to cross the river, climb up, and then get into the hammock because I am exhausted. Oh, all right guys, well, I'm gonna leave it here. I'm exhausted, so I'm gonna get myself tucked up in bed and um, yeah, we'll see you in the morning. Alrighty, cheers. Oh, good morning. Not a bad place to wake up. <laughs> the view is pretty epic from up here. Um, have been enjoying it from the hammock. Not a great night's sleep last night. Um, I just couldn't get the, the whole sleeping bag, pad, hammock combination to work very well. Um, 
so I ended up actually getting rid of the sleeping pad. It wasn't too cold last night. And once I did that, it was much better and I got off to sleep pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, feeling a bit tired this morning, but oh, still feeling pretty refreshed of being in an awesome spot like this. So I think it might be time for some coffee and breakfast. Um, I am going to have to get out of here pretty quickly this morning. I've got a lot of stuff to do at home, so uh, I won't be hanging around too long. So I think I'm going to break down camp and then I've got a new firebox stove, uh, Twig stove, that I'm pretty keen to give a, give a crack. So I might head down to the river very quickly and um, fire that up and uh, make some coffee, which is very much needed, of course. I think that's a plan. I don't think I'm going to cook up breakfast. I'm just going to have a, a muesli bar. I've got one left, so um, I think that'll do me until I get back to the car and I might stop off on the way home and get some breakfast that way. Alrighty, see you down the river. Coffee time, my favourite favorite time of the day, I think. So I've got this awesome little um, firebox stove nano. This is the titanium one. And just a little um, case that turns into a bit of a, a base for it. Um, yeah, I've never never used one of these before. I've watched Steve's videos. So if you look at fire, firebox.com, um, Steve, the owner of the company, does some awesome videos, cooks all sorts of amazing things in twig stoves, things you would never imagine would be possible. Um, so I'll be pretty keen to give it a go ever since I stumbled across um, some other people using his stuff. Here we go. So I've got a whole bunch of sticks that I've prepared and I think I'll just use a bit of um, bit of stringy bark. A bit of stringy bark to get the uh, show started. So they can be a bit finicky without a fire lighter, but I like to try and um, just start it with natural materials if I can. So I've got a pretty decent fire going in there now, so I think it's time to put the billy on. You see that it's got these two, um, two slots and one on that side too, just so you can feed sticks in. So obviously you want, if you're putting sticks in the top, then it's going to be hard with the billy, billy there, and obviously the billy has to sit on top of the uh, supports so that's where these come in while the billy is boiling I just got a new snow peak foldable coffee dripper I'm always interested in new ways to make coffee out outdoors so it's pretty simple just sits on the cup like so and then you've got a, uh, a paper filter so this is an unbleached paper filter and that just sits in there, pretty easy. Alrighty, let's see if the uh, billy is boiling. It certainly looks like it. Oh yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh, even though it doesn't look like summer, there are about a million little bushfires that are just all around me. It must be like a cloud. All on my backpack. Uh, they have smelt me out and uh, yeah, just tiny little ones. Fortunately, they don't bite, but they do get a little bit annoying after a while. What a, what a spot for a brew. Oh, how awesome does titanium look when it gets a bit of heat on it? That beautiful purpley blue colour. 
that's so you're nice. Coffee was amazing. Um, yeah, there's a bit of a learning curve to that little firebox stove for sure. Um, like all most things in life, I guess. Um, but yeah, Twix stoves can be a little bit finicky and I'm sure next time I'll get that one firing a bit hotter and burning longer. And I think I might even try the Swedish fire torch method inside the stove, which I have seen works really well. But all in all, yeah, I think this might be the end of the trip. Um, I've just finished packing up. I've just got to put the cameras away. Um, I probably won't bother shooting on the walkout just because you've seen it on the walk in and, and I've got to get out of here as well. So look, I just want to say a really big thank you. Um, this is my first year on YouTube. It's been, um, yeah, it's been really enjoyable. I love being part of this community and having people comment and interact on, the, on my content um, really helps motivate me to come out here and, and do this sort of thing. Um, so yeah, as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't, maybe consider subscribing um, and that'll certainly help this channel grow. And um, anyway, hope everyone has a really great Christmas. Um, Happy New Year, stay safe guys, and we'll see you, uh, we'll see you soon. Cheers.